My name is Megan Jonas and I am the community news director for CC Media here in Salem. I've lived in Elko and then I moved to Reno, Nevada for my first year of undergraduate and then I moved back to Elko and then I moved up to Montana for the rest of my undergraduate degree up in Missoula and then I moved down to Albuquerque, New Mexico and now I'm here in Salem, Oregon and I think that covers all the places. I moved to Salem last September. We were driving through last summer trying to figure out where in Oregon we wanted to live and we didn't even have Salem on our list of places to consider, but we had stopped at the French press and we just really liked the town. And then we stopped again on our way back um, and camped out on someone's farm in like West Salem or something like that. And it was just really lovely and everyone was so nice and we explored some more and yeah, it just felt like a small town, but it had the amenities of a big city, which I really appreciated. I always had a love for words. I was always reading and writing and doing things like that. and. We lived like next to a cul-de-sac and it was like a very close knit community. There were a lot of other kids our age. And so I would do like a little newsletter that I would like type out and print out on like Microsoft Word with like jokes, like recipes, things like that. And then I would like put it in all of my neighbor's mailboxes, like a little newspaper. Um, and I only did that a few times, but the feeling of being able to create something and be like, here's some information you need to know. And it's literally just like the weather report and like, here's a block party happening. And that was really fun. Um, and then I just continued to do it. And it was interesting because every job presentation we would have to do in like middle school or high school or stuff, I could never choose like which job I wanted to do. And so I always just ended up being like, well, I guess I'll just do journalism because I like to write. And then lo and behold, I just kept doing that for the rest of my life where I was like, oh, well, journalism, I like to write. And so now here I am writing for a living and that still is mind blowing to me. I really liked writing like play and movie scripts. Like that was my favorite thing to write, but having the little newsletters was fun. When you think of like J school and stuff like that, based on my experience, it felt like a lot of the time it was like, you know, you're being expected that you're working full time as a journalist while you're in school, right? Like you getting a college degree in journalism means that you're like a journalist, right? And so for me, I was like, basically paying my way through college myself. And so I was working multiple different jobs and it was always this like, oh, well, why aren't you doing more in this journalism space? And I'm like, well, I actually, you know, really need to work so that I can have money for groceries and for rent and to literally just survive, pay tuition, things like that. The first one that I was at was the University of Nevada, Reno. Um, and that was a lot different than the journalism school I ended up graduating out of, which is the University of Montana School of Journalism. Um, so UNR, they focused on a few different tracks, but they really put a priority on like knowing that you can do public relations stuff as well. And so it was like, oh, we're going to show you like Illustrator and Photoshop and stuff like that. Things that I did not necessarily enjoy um, doing as much. Um, but that was a very interesting school to be in because I think they have like seven Pulitzers that they've won or something like that, which are huge awards in journalism. And so that's why I was like, oh, I'll go to this state school. I'll do that. But then I ended up not liking uh, the state school. And so I took a year off and then I went up to the University of Montana School of Journalism. And the reason I actually chose UM um, was because I had toured a bunch of different schools, but UM, I was able to sit down with a faculty member right off the bat for one of my tours and go through all my interests and things like that. Um, and get like a personalized tour across campus and being able to like go in classes and see equipment and things like that. And that was really cool. So J schools are tough to get through regardless and UM was definitely tough to get through, but they did teach me a lot for what I'm really grateful for. The pros are that once you kind of get into the field of journalism and you learn how to communicate in that way, it makes communicating in every other aspect so much easier. I think the cons of journalism is that it can very easily take over your life. And I think that's something that kind of gets encouraged in traditional journalism um, is that it's like, oh, well, if you're not suffering the hardest, you're not working the hardest. And I don't agree with that at all. You know, write for yourself too. Don't just write for other people. Like figure out what your style is by yourself and then figure out how you can move that into journalism and make it work. Because people will also tell you like, ah, oh, you know, we should get rid of this and this and this. But for me, I was like, that's literally my voice. That's how I write. That's how people know that this is mine, you know? And I was glad that I was able to keep a lot of those things in when we would go through editing processes, being able to say no, like, I actually don't agree with your edit, and I'm actually going to keep it how I had it. And that's very hard, because like I said, journalism is very much about outside validation, right? People liking your work. But if you like your work, then it doesn't matter as much when people don't. I really enjoyed reporting on the Blackfeet Reservation. That was really special. And being able to 
really see in action the difference that just being kind and intentional with your sources can make. The community news program slash department is new from CC Media, but it's something they've been wanting to do for a really long time. So we've just been doing public access television and radio sometimes for 30 years, right? And so people really wanted more public affairs and news type programming. Um, and so that's when they started looking at, okay, what does community news look like? What is this? Um, and so I came in and the program didn't exist at all. But the community news department really is about prioritizing getting good information out to people, information that makes people feel good and connects them with resources and is human focused and human centered. Our priorities are telling the stories of people that typically haven't had their stories told or telling them in a different way than how they've typically been told. So our very first story was a Safety Compass, which is an amazing organization that works in not only the Salem-Kaiser area, but all throughout Oregon. They connect um, survivors of human trafficking with resources across the state. And then after that, we did uh, Nikki Paxton, who is the development director for Imagine Black. She's incredible and she's huge into curating community and kind of helping people build that community and encouraging them to do so. Um, the next person we interviewed was Julianne Jackson, who is the CEO and executive director of Black Joy Oregon. Um, and being able to hear her story of kind of what it was like growing up as a black person in Oregon and how that directly impacts the work that she does today in showing black excellence and black joy across the state in these very white areas, I think is very important to keep on people's minds, especially in Oregon. So they are being distributed across our public access television channels. Those are channels 21, 22, 23, and 322, um, as well as on our YouTube. They'll also be on our radio station. And it also is available across all podcasting apps, which is really cool and special. I never thought that I'd have like a podcast with my voice on it, but it feels really awesome that I do. And then also our Substack, which is where you'll be able to find all the written print pieces. Um, and those are also being shared on the Salem Reporters website. Really excited to be able to start doing community journalism classes and media literacy classes for people. But I think in the meantime, just continuing to share stories. I'd love to do like a year long project about our unhoused community in Salem. I think that would be really impactful, um, especially when we talk about, you know, what are the things that are important to people in Salem? Um, and I think a lot of the times people think the thing that's the most important is like a problem, right? But it's actually just a lack of a solution in a way, but there are solutions in Salem that I think we need to share and continue to share those solutions with people and make them realize that this place is actually really nice to live and that there are people that are trying really hard to make this place a really nice place to live. Um, and just, yeah, giving those voices a platform. My name is Ashley Jackson Lawrence and I am the community news and information specialist here at Capital Community Media. I would say the things that make me, me are um, anything creative. I love dancing, I love video production, I love painting, I love it all. And uh, I would say my laughing is what makes me me <laughs> because I am always laughing. <laughs> I am originally from Columbus, Ohio. Um, the exact location is called Pickerington, Ohio, which is like a rural suburb part of Columbus, Ohio. Um, and yeah, I grew up there throughout the whole school system from like preschool until high school. Then I moved to Las Vegas with my parents um, in 2014 when I was 21. Um, and yeah, then I met my husband and moved to Oregon. <laughs> so we first moved here um, in 2017, my husband and I, because he got a coaching job, um, an assistant coaching job on the boys basketball team at South Salem. And so um, we did that, but then we moved back to Vegas and then we came back here um, in 2019 because um, he got a scholarship to go play basketball um, his last year of eligibility at Corbin University. And that was so great uh, of an experience for him. And then we left again back home to Vegas because of COVID. And then um, we moved back here in 20, uh, yeah, in 2021. And so been here ever since. We've been stayed put. Third time is the charm. So I started um, my career in media creation, I would say in high school. Um, I of course had like photography classes and things and I was really interested in that and actually yearbook class, I'm just remembering that. Um, 
was really interesting to me because that whole creativity side of um, creating a layout that looks good and, and figuring out what that means for me was really cool. Um, and then I became involved in my aunt's magazine. Um, she had a magazine uh, for women to inspire women in Columbus, Ohio, and it was called Role Model Magazine. And that was really cool. I was um, an ambassador slash like assistant for her. And I saw her um, editing the magazine and doing everything by herself and creating these big events and things. And it was really cool to witness and be a part of and help out with. So um, from that, I was inspired to create my own blog. I made like um, a blog about natural hair um, and interviewed um, people who rocked their natural hair. Um, completely forgot about that. <laughs> and yeah, and so, that kind of uh, jump started my like interviewing. And then when I moved to Vegas, I continued to try to um, create blogs and then also start like a YouTube career. <laughs> when I had moved to Vegas, I reached out to um, somebody who was in the dance community. Um, from what I saw, he covered a lot of dance events and um, dancers and, and whatnot. And so I reached out, his name was Clayton Ashcraft. And um, I wanted to try to see See if there's any way I could help out or like how I can be involved because I love dance. I grew up dancing but not consistently and so I connected with Clayton and he was really sweet and open-armed and said yeah when you get here like let me know and we'll like I'll get you connected and so when I got to Vegas I um, went out to it he took me to a dance event and that was really really cool. I got to meet a lot of uh, other dancers in the community who um, literally are in the shows that are on the strip and it was like mind-blowing <laughs> to just casually be like with them so that was really amazing and from that I was inspired to um, get to know them on a deeper level and, and kind of combine that interviewing um, side with um, the YouTube side that I was trying to create and I um, created a YouTube channel called The Grind Effect which um, was spelled, uh, effect was spelled with an AE symbol so that I could capture both meanings of effect um, within that, thinking I was extra clever. I interviewed dancers and it was really awesome to hear their stories and, and to share their stories. And then also worked, um, helped out at a local radio station um, and did man on the street interviews with them and that was really nerve-wracking but a really great experience so um, Vegas was where I kind of kicked off like my whole video online presence yeah <laughs> I love to tell stories of everyday people and making them feel seen, making everybody feel seen because I feel like everybody has a story that can impact another person or multiple people. And so I love to just share stories of people who are really passionate about what they're doing so that that spark can you know, ignite somebody else's flame. I learned how to do everything strictly off of YouTube and Google. <laughs> I um, am a very curious person. <laughs> and as soon as I think of anything that I wanna know, I Google it or I YouTube it. And so that's how I learned how to do everything. And I would kind of see what the latest thing um, and technology was, and I would immediately, I don't know this is the best way to go about it, but I would go buy it. <laughs> I would go find it and try to apply it to what I, whatever it was that I was doing. And I, I love like anything that has to do with video production technology. It's really interesting to me. And so I just Googled everything, uh, read all the articles and watched all the videos to learn about every single thing that I wanted to learn. So. That was, that's how I did it. <laughs> uh, what I would say to somebody who doesn't want to go to traditional school to learn uh, video production is to go on YouTube, start there, but then also um, find people in your community to connect with that are doing the things that you wanna do. So you can ask them questions or maybe shadow them and just seeing if there are opportunities for you to be involved in to learn more. Continue to go for your dreams no matter what. I'm gonna steal a quote from my husband been. Your dreams don't stop unless you do, so just keep going. What I would like to see for 
the news program and for Stories of Salem uh, would be um, just continual growth. I feel like with each story, we keep getting better and better. So I just would like to see us connecting um, with a wider range of audience and topics and keep going because I feel like we're on the right track.